From the previous video, we learned that SARS-CoV-2, the virus responsible for COVID, seeks out a specific surface protein molecular target to gain access to our cells called ACE2, which stands for angiotensin converting enzyme 2. A transmembrane zinc metalloprotein found in the lungs, GI tract, kidneys, and blood vessels, their distribution would explain some of the presenting symptoms of COVID, including respiratory and GI distress, renal failure, and dementia. However, the clinical response spectrum to SARS-CoV-2 is quite broad, ranging from completely asymptomatic to death, suggesting variability in either the configuration or number of ACE2 targets from individual to individual. Over the next few minutes, we're going to look at the actual function of the ACE2 metalloprotein in our bodies and explore some of the clinical situations that may make the protein a more suitable target for COVID. To understand the function of ACE2, we first have to review the renin angiotensin system. Involving the kidneys, liver, lungs, blood vessels, and adrenals, the renin angiotensin system is a closed loop feedback mechanism that helps maintain renal blood flow. The kidneys are designed to filter the nitrogen waste products of protein metabolism from our bodies. To function normally, they need a steady flow of blood, receiving about 25% of the total cardiac output. A drop in blood pressure, either systemically from heart failure or locally from a narrowing of the renal artery supplying blood to the kidney, causes the kidney to secrete a chemical called renin into the bloodstream. Renin then links to a protein hormone produced in the liver called angiotensinogen, converting it to angiotensin 1. A second enzyme produced in the lungs, called angiotensin-converting enzyme, or ACE, then links to angiotensin 1 converting it to angiotensin 2, the active configuration of the hormone. Angiotensin 2 then acts on both the peripheral arteries throughout the body and the adrenal glands. The arteries constrict, and the adrenal glands produce another hormone called aldosterone, which causes the kidneys to resorb more salt and water from the urine. The combination of vascular constriction and salt water retention raises the systemic blood pressure and restores blood flow to the compromised kidney. So, just to summarize, decreased blood flow to the kidney causes the kidney to secrete the enzyme renin. Renin acts on a hormone precursor from the liver called angiotensinogen, converting it to angiotensin 1. A second enzyme produced in the lungs, called ACE, or angiotensin-converting enzyme, acts on angiotensin 1, converting it to angiotensin 2, the active form of the hormone. Angiotensin 2 then acts on both the arteries and adrenal glands, causing constriction of the peripheral blood vessels of the arms and legs, and secretion of another hormone from the adrenals called aldosterone. Aldosterone causes the kidneys to absorb salt and water from the urine. The combination of vasoconstriction and salt water retention increases blood pressure and restores blood flow to the kidney. Now with this information, I can show you how the renin-angiotensin system is related to our ACE2 membrane protein that the coronavirus uses to locate and infect particular cells in our body for reproduction. First, let's stylize our cell membrane model and restore an intact ACE2 membrane protein. The active form of ACE2 is produced by an additional enzyme called Shedase. Shedase cleaves the external component of the ACE2 protein and releases it into the bloodstream. The cleaved ACE2 then interacts with angiotensin 2, converting it into angiotensin 1-7. Angiotensin 1-7 is a powerful antioxidant and vasodilator. Dilating the peripheral vessels of the body and eliminating the action of angiotensin 2 on the adrenals, angiotensin 1-7 lowers blood pressure and is basically the counterbalance to the renin-angiotensin system. There are medications that also counteract the effects of the renin-angiotensin system, including angiotensin-converting enzyme inhibitors, or ACEIs, and angiotensin receptor blockers, or ARBs. ACEIs are just like they sound, blocking angiotensin-converting enzyme from transforming angiotensin 1 to angiotensin 2. Angiotensin receptor blockers are also descriptive, working on the system a little further down the line, blocking angiotensin 2 from binding to its receptors on the blood vessels and adrenal glands. During the early days of the pandemic, there was some concern that both ACEIs and ARBs could increase the risk of a viral infection by upregulating the expression of the ACE2 surface proteins throughout the body. However, preliminary data has shown just the opposite. COVID-19 patients on angiotensin-converting enzyme inhibitors 
or angiotensin receptor blockers do much better with decreased all-cause mortality if they stay on their blood pressure medications during their infection. Whether this is due to lessening the impact of the infection itself or simply preventing death from the complications of hypertension is currently not clear and more research is needed. So, a lot of information and a little confusing in my opinion because of the similar terminology used for the various hormones, enzymes, and medications. Before we go on to the possible ACE2-related risk factors of a SARS-CoV-2 infection, a quick review. Under the category of hormones, we have angiotensinogen from the liver, which is converted to angiotensin 1 by the kidneys and angiotensin 2 by the lungs. Angiotensin 1-7 is produced by the action of the ACE2 enzyme on angiotensin 2. Enzymes that modify the hormones are renin from the kidneys, angiotensin-converting enzyme or ACE from the lungs, and angiotensin-converting enzyme 2 from the lungs, kidneys, and blood vessels. Medications are angiotensin-converting enzyme inhibitors, or ACEIs, and angiotensin receptor blockers, or ARBs. Now, back to our SARS-CoV-2 receptor. At first, it may seem sort of random that SARS-CoV-2 targets this particular pressure-modulating surface protein in the body, but it's actually brilliant by design. Remember, the goal of the virus is to reproduce and infect as many hosts as possible to ensure its existence. Once the virus establishes a reproductive cycle in the cytoplasm of our cells, our ribosomes produce the proteins to create new copies of the virus particles that bud out and can either infect other cells in our body or they can pass from us into the environment to infect another host. Remember, these ACE2 surface proteins are located predominantly in the lungs, kidneys, blood vessels, and GI tract. As such, when the new virus buds from the host cell, it can either be coughed out through the lungs, urinated out through the kidneys, defecated from the GI tract, or absorbed from the bloodstream of the infected host. With all these potential routes of transmission, this may be why this particular virus is so infective and while personal hygiene and hand washing is imperative. In the last few minutes, let's look at some of the presumed risk factors of a fulminant COVID-19 infection and how these may be related to the ACE2 surface protein. The clinical response to a SARS-CoV-2 infection likely depends on three dominant factors, the initial viral load, integrity and strength of your immune system, and the number and configuration of the ACE2 surface proteins that serve as a portal of entry for the viral particles. As we discussed on the previous COVID-19 video, the coronavirus gains entry to the cytoplasm of our cells and commandeers the ribosomes and other protein-making machinery in the cytoplasm to make new copies of itself. With a limited initial viral load, a few particles enter the host cell, reproduce, and bud new viral particles that can then be detected by our immune system. <laughs> The immune system then develops antibodies against the virus, which keeps the virus in check. These patients would be asymptomatic carriers of SARS-CoV-2. However, with a large initial viral load or weakened immune system, an abundance of viral genetic material is available in the cytoplasm for reproduction, producing an overwhelming number of new viral particles that can then infect other cells in the body, starting a chain reaction and fulminant COVID infection. Like any chain reaction, there needs to be an initial critical mass of material to sustain the process, which could explain the 10 to 14 day incubation period observed in many COVID patients. Epidemiologic analysis of COVID patients over the past few months have revealed some of the risk factors associated with a severe clinical response to SARS-CoV-2, including advanced age, baseline health, physical fitness, and diet. Theoretically, excluding the initial viral load and immune system integrity factors, initial data suggest all of this may be explained by the ACE2 surface protein and its relationship to the renin-angiotensin system. As we discussed, the two dominant active hormone configurations in the renin-angiotensin system are angiotensin-2 and angiotensin-1-7. Angiotensin II raises blood pressure in response to limited blood flow to the kidneys and appears to have inflammatory and atherogenic properties, meaning it causes plaques to form in the vessels of our body. Angiotensin I-7, on the other hand, lowers blood pressure and appears to have anti-inflammatory and antioxidant effects, reducing atherosclerotic disease in our vessels. As you can see, these two key hormones are in direct competition, and the dominant species is probably determined by the individual's baseline health status. In young, healthy, and physically fit individuals, angiotensin 1-7 is king. However, 
in a sedentary elderly individual with heart failure, hypertension, diabetes, and a poor diet, angiotensin 2 would rule. Of course, in a situation where angiotensin 1-7 is the dominant hormone, we would expect SHED-ACE to be working overtime, cleaving the external component of the ACE2 metalloprotein and thereby converting angiotensin 2 to angiotensin 1-7. Finally, let's assume the spike protein in the SARS-CoV-2 viral particle specifically recognizes the intact transmural ACE2 protein on our cell membranes. In healthy individuals, with an abundance of angiotensin 1-7, most of the ACE2 proteins would have been cleaved, reducing the number of potential viral gateways into our cells and limiting the chance of the cytoplasm reaching that genetic critical mass. However, in the chronically ill patient, where angiotensin 2 dominates, most of the ACE2 surface proteins would remain intact, allowing many viral particle entry points, increasing the likelihood of a fulminant COVID infection. The binding and deformation of the intact proteins by coronavirus may further reduce the availability of the ACE2 enzyme, increasing vascular inflammation resulting in the local thrombosis of arteries in the body, which could explain the findings of stroke and ischemia in the fingers and toes in some patients. If this all turns out to be true, exogenous SHED-ACE enzyme may be a powerful medication in the treatment of both hypertension and a SARS-CoV-2 infection. A lot of stuff to consider, and I'm sure as we learn more about the virus every day, some of these theories will be confirmed or revised, and more importantly, from this information, we will develop effective therapies to mitigate the clinical impact of a SARS-CoV-2 infection. As for now, as we relax some of the shelter-in-place mandates across the country, it's important to remember that the coronavirus is not going away, and we need to continue to be socially responsible as we reopen businesses and places of gathering. Personal hygiene is paramount, and personal protection devices should probably be donned by the most susceptible members of our community during peak outbreaks of the virus in the months and years to come. A few more suggestions before we wrap this up. If the shelter-in-place mandate caused you to put on a few extra pounds with diet and discretion and lack of physical activity, time to get healthy again. In the warmer months, as humidity levels increase, the suspended water droplets in the air tend to drag viral particles to the ground, reducing their aerosolization and spread from a cough or sneeze. However, we're finding that the floor surfaces are covered with coronavirus, so it may be prudent to take off your shoes and leave them outside the house. Also, no such thing as a five-second rule. If it hits the ground, throw it away. Coronavirus is zoonotic, meaning it can pass from another species to humans. There are anecdotal reports of house pets harboring SARS-CoV-2. Until the data is definitive, it may be prudent to avoid face and mouth licks from grandma's dog, especially if she just recovered from an illness herself. As always, stay happy, stay healthy, and thanks for watching.